Now, I expect that you're familiar with how convolution works in graph neural networks. However, let's do a quick overview of how message passing in graphs can be used to generate embeddings for every node in the graph structure. We've already discussed the fact that in a graph neural network, for every layer of the GNN, a different computation graph is created for each node in the original graph structure. This computation graph is based on the local neighborhood of that node, and this, of course, is different for every node in the graph because every node in the graph is connected to a different set of neighbors. Now, let's talk about how node embeddings are generated for each node in the graph. Now, every node in the original graph structure will have its own set of node features, and node features are typically features of the entity that the node represents in your graph structure. When these node features are passed through a graph neural network, the neural network will generate node embeddings based on the local structure of the neighborhood around the target node. So the node's features as well as its neighboring nodes are used to generate the embeddings for that node. Let's consider the target node we have here A. Now, if you look at A, the immediate neighbors of A are B, C, and D, which means when node embeddings for node A are updated, node A will get information from its immediate neighbors B, C, and D. In the first layer of the graph neural network, the target node A will only get information or messages passed to it from its immediate neighboring nodes, from nodes to which it's directly connected. Message passing is used to pass the information to update the embeddings for node A. This information is transformed along the edges of the graph and then aggregated together and then used to update node A's embeddings. Embeddings for node A are updated based on the current embeddings for A plus the neighborhood transformed aggregated embeddings. For every target node, in the first layer of the neural network, you only get information from its immediate neighbors. In the second layer of the neural network, each neighbor of A will get information from its other neighbors. For example, the immediate neighbors of A are B, C, and D. The immediate neighbors of node B are A and C, node C are A, B, E, and F. And for node D, we have node A as the only immediate neighbor. For every target node, the second layer of the neural network aggregates information from nodes that are two hops away from the target node. Once again, these messages passed from the neighboring nodes are transformed along the edges and aggregated before they're used to update the target node. This computation graph that you see on the right is the computation graph for node A. This computation graph defines the architecture or structure of the neural network, and this is going to be different for each node in your input graph. Each node will have its own computation graph, own neural network architecture during training. This process of getting the information and aggregating the information from neighboring nodes is referred to as message passing. Message passing involves aggregation and transformation. The transformation of the messages that is the embeddings from neighboring nodes are done by passing them through a neural network and the messages from neighboring nodes are then aggregated. Now, if you think about graph structures, there is no inherent ordering to the neighbors of a particular node in a graph. This means that the aggregation operation performed during message passing needs to be permutation invariant, meaning you use aggregation such as sum average max, which produce the same results no matter what order you feed the inputs in. And then of course, we've discussed the transformation that's applied to the messages that are passed between nodes. Messages are transformed using a neural network of learnable parameters. 